this morning to the book of Romans and also to the book of Isaiah. If you want to, you can just go ahead to the book of Romans and I'll catch up with you in just a few moments. Father, we do come to you this morning. Our prayer is, Lord, that each one that is here, that one day they will see Jesus. Face to face to know him be able to spend eternity with him. And oh Lord, what a thrill it will be to see our loved ones there. To think that they will know us and we will know them. But most of all, Lord, there'll be no mistake. When we see the nail scars in the hands of Jesus, the payment that he made for our sins. Thank you, Lord. Be with us this morning. We we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you will, the song reminds me of another prayer request. In fact, too, uh, remember Mrs. Diane Emery will be having surgery Tuesday, I believe it is. And then some of you may remember it's about probably 18 to 20 years ago. On a Saturday night, while our missions conference, uh, Diane uh, McCutcheon sang that song that Carolyn just sang there. And I, I believe it's the first time I heard the song. But pray, her husband will be having a uh, heart uh, catheterization. And I, I believe that is either tomorrow or Tuesday. They're in Brazil, if you will. So remember them. And then uh, one more uh, announcement, if you will. By the way, I like to see him make the announcements. I don't have to. Do that. And uh, uh, the other thing is, you don't pay no attention anyway, do you? <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll guarantee you, before the day's over, or at least before the next two or three days over, I'll have a call, and people will ask me what time is the fall festival on Saturday night. But uh, don't ask me; I won't know either. Uh, okay, but uh, keep uh, keep these in mind, if you will. Now I forgot what was said. Oh, uh, last week we had the uh, 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 the sheriff's department and his baby. Does these adaptive dresses of uh, training? And if any of you want to have a part in our safety team, you're welcome to. If you was here, if you will do what needs to be done. And so, if you uh, are willing to do it, just see David and uh, he'll put you on the list. You say, Preacher, we don't need it around here. Uh, thank God we never had. But if you notice, I believe it was yesterday, the day before, some more happenings took place. And uh, it's been a good week. Uh, I've had uh, uh, a lot of uh, good things happen. And uh, people thanking us for uh, the cards that you send and uh, for caring for people. Uh, but a lot of people thanked us for the uh, uh, tracks and all the women out. And then I had a few threats also. <laughs> honestly, folks, uh, honestly. Uh, I won't go into what those were, but uh, some of them was concerning a gun and me. So this, <laughs> uh, if you want to help, you're welcome, okay? And uh, we would appreciate it. But folks, we love you. And this morning, I want, if you will, to go with me, we're going to take a ride this morning down the road. Uh, I'm in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, and I'll be in Romans chapter 3 in just a moment. But in Isaiah chapter 12, and verse number one it says, in, in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though 
Thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Amen. For the Lord, Jehovah, is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. And therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. The wells of salvation. This morning, if we look at this, if you think with me, that word salvation, salvation is used in the text, the verses that I just read to you this morning, we find that these, this word in these verses is found three times. But we also find that the word salvation is used some 164 times in the Bible. In the New Testament, or excuse me, in the Old Testament, the word comes from the Hebrew word which means deliverance and victory. Deliverance and victory. In the New Testament, we find that uh, this word comes from the Greek word which means deliverance, preservation, and safety. We find that from these in the Old and New Testament, we find out that salvation uh, uh, means deliverance and victory. We find for Israel here in the text we read, uh, uh, their backs, if you will, is against the wall. They have a little hope of escape, but God. And God said, just stand still. Let me do the work. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And for them, there was deliverance. And for them, there was victory. In the New Testament, we find salvation is speaking of deliverance. And thank God, when a person comes to Christ, we find that he has deliverance. He is delivered from sin. Sin no longer has a hold upon him. Sin no longer is in control of him. And then we find that not only when we trust the Lord and uh, get salvation, we have deliverance, but we have preservation. Are you glad that God holds on to us and we don't have to hold on Amen. to him? The Amen. preservation that we have in Christ Jesus and then <coughs> deliverance, preservation, and safety. Safe in the arms of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, you see salvation. Now watch it. Salvation is what a person receives when he trusts in Jesus as his Savior, when he trusts in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Salvation, remember this. Uh, Christmas time's coming, okay? Salvation is the gift of God. You want to get your family something for Christmas, you get them to Jesus. <laughs> I mean, salvation is the gift of God. Now, salvation is not something that we will receive someday. Salvation is a right now possession of every person who has believed on, believed in and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. If, 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 you have trusted Christ as your Savior. 
You are as much slave now as you will ever be. <coughs> Salvation is not something you'll get when you die. I tell you, if you don't have it before you die, you ain't going to get it any time. Right. Salvation is of the Lord. We must trust in Him, place our faith in Him, and receive Him as our Savior. Now this morning, with that in mind, I've entitled my message, Traveling the Roman Road. Traveling the Roman Road. We're in the book of, of Romans now. Romans chapter 3. I want you to follow along with me as I read you some verses. In Romans and chapter number 3. We could read the whole book of Romans, the whole book of John. In fact, we could read the whole Bible and find this, but most of you would be hungry before we go all the way through the Bible. So we'll just take a little stops along the road, if you will. In Romans 3.10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. If you will, look down to verse 23. For all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Says there's none righteous. Says all are sinners. Look to verse or chapter 5. And look to verse number 8, if you will. The Bible says we're all sinners now. It says, but God commandeth his love toward us. In the while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now when Jesus died on the Calvary, He was dying for us, for you and I. If you will, skip down to chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. It says, for the wages, for the wages of sin is death. We're all sinners. Sin has a payment. It's high cost. The wages of sin is death. But the gift, that's the next part of that, verse 23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm. Jesus paid it all because he paid it all. We can trust him as our Savior. And he will give us eternal life. And he will look. It is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's not through the preacher. It's not through the Pope. It, it's not through some bishop. It's not through a Baptist church. It's not through a Catholic <coughs> church. It's not through the baptismal waters. It's through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you will go, slip over to chapter 10 of the book of Romans. Chapter 10. And down about verse number 9. Romans 10, 9, if you will. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You see, when Jesus died, death, he, 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 he died. He, he paid our sin debt. They buried him. But my friend, this verse here tells us that death could not hold him. And God brought him up out of the grave. And the Bible says 
if we would believe that, that he has died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he arose again from the grave. And then he said, Thou shalt be saved. Look at verse 10. For with the heart man believeth in the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with the heart, with the heart to believe, if man will truly trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, his finished work, his righteousness, then confess that unto salvation. Look at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Mm. We're all sinners. That's right. Christ died for all sinners. And he will save all sinners. Amen. Who will trust him, believe in him, as their own Savior. Acts 16. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. <coughs> I ask you this morning, if you have never trusted in Jesus Christ as your Savior, <coughs> won't you believe in what the Bible says, first of all, about you and me. <clears throat> it's in the Bible it says we're sinners. My friend, I love you. But I want you to know this. Whether you admit it or not, you're a sinner. That's right. That's right. Amen. And whether you realize it or not, if you're not a sinner, God won't save you. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> because he comes to seek and to save that which was lost. What the Bible says about us is that we're all sinners. What it says about Jesus is that he loved you. Amen. <clears throat> he loved each one. And he said if you will receive, if you will simply trust him, he'll save you. Man on the cross, we find Jesus. We find him. That thief said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the Lord said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. My friend, that day that thief went to be with Jesus. Now he was a saved thief. <laughs> He'd already accepted the Lord. Amen. But do you realize, my friend, he never did any good works. In fact, that's the reason he's on that cross. <clears throat> he didn't do anything but believe in Jesus Christ. If you want to be saved, you've got to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Amen. the salvation. Said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He'll save you. Amen. He'll keep you. He'll give you safety. But then I want you to see something else. As I said this morning, um, this morning the title of the message is Traveling Down the Roman Road. <clears throat> Traveling the Roman Road. I find in my Bible that the Bible teaches us that salvation is a great mover, if you will. And salvation has taken many people many places. If I remember right, Brother Tim's dad, when Tim was a young man, used to uh, work for a moving company. I uh, uh, had a, uh, a big moving van. They'd haul people from one side of the nation to the other. The other night, I was talking to a man who has a business here in town, a, a moving business. They move people. But I tell you what, salvation is one that really moves people. I find, first of all, salvation brought Israel out of bondage. We found that there. Verse, or in the book of Exodus 14, and verse number 13, it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear 
ye not stand still to see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more for ever. My friend, God is going to deliver his people. He brought them through the waters. The others that was against God's people, they drowned in the sea. He brought them out. He brought them out of bondage. I find that in the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 9, that it brought Jonah out of a well. There in Jonah 2 9, but I, <clears throat> but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving, and I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Brought Jonah out of the well. In the book of Psalms, chapter 40, David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my We find that salvation brought Paul out of his lost condition. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.12, and I think Jesus, and I think Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and to have wit and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saving or saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and Paul said, of whom I am chief. Salvation brought Paul out of his lost condition into being a child of God. And my friend, he'll do the same for you if you're not saved this morning. But if you have been saved, and I pray you have, or will be, I want you to notice there are some places that salvation will move you. Salvation will move you. First of all, if you have salvation, if you say, it's going to take you into holiness. Holiness. 1 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are because new. Luke chapter 19, verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he, he, he saw him and he said unto him, unto Zacchaeus, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. My friend, salvation will move you. Salvation will cause you to change the way you live. <laughs> no man can receive Jesus Christ and remain the same. Jesus said he came to seek and to save. He came to save from sin. Not in sin. When a person is saved, my friend, there will be a change. Remember Saul of Tarsus that we read about? We find that Saul of Tarsus, who was to become the Apostle Paul, 
You remember when he got saved, he was on the road to commit murder. But the Lord changed. Time he got down to Jerusalem, this prisoner, this murderer was a preacher. <laughs> Listen, salvation will change you. It'll change you. We find the woman at the well. The woman at the well. I tell you, she was there when she was because the wretched don't come at that time of the day. Except Jesus came. And Jesus saved her. My friend, the next thing we see, she's going out telling people, come see a man. <laughs> come see a man that knew all about me. He told me all my life, and he changed. They scratched their head. They said, who is this? Sure looks like that woman nobody had nothing to do with. Jesus saved her. He changed her. Yeah. Zacchaeus. Come down out of that tree. I'm going to your house today. Then Zacchaeus said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man of false accusation, I restore unto him fourfold. I tell you, that tax collector sure changed it. Salvation. He got saved. He was changed. I want you to know this morning, I believe with all my heart, <clears throat> that one mark of true salvation is a changed life. 1 John 3, 8, But now you also put off all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man. When you get saved, my friend, salvation will change you. It'll change the way you it'll change the way you talk. <laughs> it, 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 it'll change the way you, you your actions, your work. It'll change you. One time a elderly Chinese woman entered to a missionary. A clinic, hospital, if you will. And she came, said she wanted to see a doctor. The doctor asked the woman, said, what can I do for you? She said, the mayor of our town has been a patient here and said he used to be a very bad man. He was cruel and mean to his children. He wasted his money gambling. He didn't provide for his family. He had a foul mouth and all the water in the world could not be enough to make it clean. But since he's been here at this place, the tiger has been changed into a lamb. Said his wife is now full of joy. Said he no longer speaks unhandsome words to her. And said they live together in peace. The doctor, missionary doctor, said, Well, that's good news. But, ma'am, what do you wish? She said, not to tell anybody, but I also have an unhappy mouth, an unclean mouth, and I'm afraid my daughter-in-law finds it none too easy to live with me. 
She said, I've come to beg you to give me some of that medicine that cured our men. The doctor was glad to hear all that testimony, to hear that story of Jesus and all the power that Jesus has to tame the tongue, control the tongue, and of the character sweetening power of the Lord Jesus Christ. This woman saw in the life of this one who had been saved that it had changed him to a new, higher level of living. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is the salvation will change you. Salvation will move you, if you will. I also want you to know salvation will take you home. Salvation will take you home. We read about salvation, what it will do. Salvation will make a family man. Salvation will make a family woman out of you when you get saved. We find that salvation took Billy Sunday out of the honky tonks and put him back in his home and in the pulpits, if you will. Salvation has changed many rebel routers into loving husbands and loving fathers. The songwriter wrote, Today I went down to the place where I used to go. Today, I saw the same old crowd I knew before. And when they asked me what had happened, I tried to tell them, thanks to Calvary, I don't live here anymore. Thanks to Calvary, I'm not the man that I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different than before. And as the tears ran down my face, I tried to tell them, thanks to Calvary, I don't come here anymore. Then we went down to the house where we used to live. My little child ran behind the door like so many times before. And I said, son, you don't need to be afraid. You've got a new daddy now. Thanks to Calvary, we don't live here anymore. Mm, thanks to Calvary, I'm not the man that I used to be. Thanks to Calvary, things are different than before. And as the tear ran down my face, <coughs> I tried to tell him, thanks to Calvary, I don't come here anymore. Thanks to Calvary, my friend, salvation will change your house. It will change your home. And then I want you to know today that salvation will take you to the house of God. It will take you to the house of God. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsake them in the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Salvation is accompanied by a desire to be with the saints of God and to worship the Lord. And there will be a desire when you get saved to praise the Lord. There will be a desire to worship the Lord. There will be a desire to serve the Lord through his local church. Some of you may remember the old song, there's a place dear to me where I'm longing to be with my friends at the old country church. There with mother we went and our Sundays were spent with my friends at the old country church. Precious years, precious years, sweet memory. Oh, what joy they bring to me. How I long once more to be with my friends 
at the old country church as a small country boy how my heart beat with joy as I kneeled at the old country church there with Jesus above in his wonderful love save my soul at the old country church in all precious sweet memories oh what joy they bring to me how I long must more to be with my friends at the old country church I will say to you when you get saved my friend salvation brings the desire for the house of God to be in church and when you love someone you want to go to their house I read a story uh, some of you remember when uh, the Dodgers used to be in Brooklyn and they moved to Los Angeles there was a woman that fell in love with the Los Angeles Dodgers and for some 18 years she never missed a ball game 18 years she never missed a ball game I knew of a family in Pleasantville that had season tickets to the Cincinnati Reds game. Season tickets went to every ball game. I knew a man in town that had season tickets to the Cleveland Cavaliers game. He never missed. That's a pretty good drive to go to each game. When I fell in love with that girl, you know what I did? I went to her house every day. I went to her house before. But when I fell in love, I went every day after I married, been married for a long time, you know what I still want? I want to go to her house every day. Amen. You know why? I love her. And I tell you, a person that is saved and he loves Jesus will have no trouble going to the Lord's house. Won't have no trouble going to church. If you are saved, nobody ought to have to beg you to go to the house of God. If you're saved, you ought to want to be in the house of God. Amen. Oh, my friends. And if you don't have that desire to be in the house of God, I would say P.S., but I'm not done. Uh, but what I want to say is this. If you don't have the desire to be in God's house, I'd check and see if I ever got saved. Amen. Then I want you to know that salvation will move. Salvation will move you into the harvest fields. The harvest fields. Mark 16, 15, and he said, and to them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Sharing the gospel is a mark of real salvation. Acts 1 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. If you're saved, my friends, if you know Christ as your Savior, you want to give out the gospel. You want to share the gospel that people might come to know Jesus. The Lord told us, he said, we're to be busy letting our little light shine for him. Let our little light shine for him. Jesus said unto them in Mark 1 17, Come ye after me, 
And I will make you become fishers of men. John 4, 35, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already of the harvest. And child of God, lift up your eyes and look at the harvest and get out and bring them in. You notice the farmers the last few days? I've seen them out in the night time, out there with their lights on, bringing in the harvest. Why? It's ripe. And if it's not brought in, it will be lost. Child of God, lift up your eyes and look for the fields are wide and the harvest Songwriter will go work in the vineyards, tis Jesus commands. Then why are we idle and folding our hands? He speaks to the children, and we must obey. Go work in the vineyard, go labor today. Sow in the morning the seed of the word, sow in the morning and trust in the Lord. He of our labor, a record will keep life everlasting and joy we shall reap. Go forth in the vineyard, how earnest the call. There's work for the children, there's plenty for all. Too precious the moments to squander away. Go work in the vineyard, go labor today. Go work in the vineyard and how glad we should be that Jesus is saying to you and to me the harvest is coming arise and away go work in the vineyard go labor today my friend salvation will take you to the harvest fields salvation will take you to the harvest fields day after day Whether you go to school in the morning, you go to work, no matter where you go, you're in the fields. You're to labor. We're to labor as we go. Amen. And then I want you to know salvation will take you home to heaven. Amen. Salvation will take you home to heaven. John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. My friend, salvation will take you to heaven. Amen. If you know the Lord is your Savior, He will take you to heaven. Salvation will move you. One day it'll move you to heaven. Thank God. Thank God. Christians, friends, if your salvation doesn't take you to holiness, doesn't give you and take you to that change, in your heart, in your life, and your actions. If your salvation doesn't take you to the house of God, and if your salvation does not take you to the harvest fields, it probably won't take you to heaven either. If it won't take you, if it doesn't move you, if a man be in Christ, he will be a new creature. If you're still the same old man that you used to be, it may be because you didn't get saved. 
You say, preacher, I made a profession. It doesn't say nothing about a profession. You must know Jesus to be Amen. saved. And if you know Jesus, it will change. That woman of the well, I tell you what, she didn't take any courses for seven years. She she didn't do much at all. Except she trusted Jesus. It will move you. One day we had a woman come in. When I was pastoring New Carolina. And that woman came into the church and uh my uh you know I, I I could never preach very well. But that woman didn't like it at all. And she didn't mind telling me so. I mean in front of everybody and uh went on and on and on about it. And uh finally she got up and left. That week we went to her house and my wife went to her house. And uh, well, to make the story short, when my wife came back home, she said, if you ever send me to that house again, I'm leaving. <laughs> I mean, to say the least, it wasn't good. Uh, the woman of the well had four husbands and was living for the fifth. So did Sue Hammond. Oh, she was mean. One day, she met Jesus. Amen. And I'll tell you what, you talk about a change. She say, come, let me tell you about a man. Those four and five didn't satisfy her, but Jesus did. Amen. Our Savior, he will move you. He's a mover. And my friends, if you're not saved, you need to come to him and get saved. Amen. Because if you die without him, you have no way to heaven. Well, he said, I am the way. Amen. And if you don't go to heaven, I'm not trying to hurt you, but I want you to know, if you don't go to heaven, you're going to hell. Christians, if you know, friends, if you know whom you see, has that salvation moved you to be a holy person? Be holy as I am holy, he said. If it hadn't changed, if you can still go out and drink and in the bottles and still enjoy it, if, if you can still um, talk the filth and all that you used to and it hadn't changed you, my friend, it might be because you got something instead of salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My friends, if your salvation doesn't move you into the harvest field, and you have no desire to see people saved. And if it doesn't move you to the house of God, if you have no desire to come, it might not move you to heaven either. Behold. Behold! One day is upon a man to die. And after that day, we will face the judgment. For the child of God to be absent from the body is to be with the Lord. My friends, if you travel down the Roman road, it only leads to one place. Heaven. Heaven. Are you saved? Yeah. As the pianist comes, heads are bowed, we're standing.